Hello, mate. Hi, mate. All right. Yeah. Coming up on today's show, Greg, we're talking about five TV shows you didn't know were turned into computer games. So. So. I bet you didn't know, Greg, that some TV shows have been turned into computer games. I did know that, Jason. Well, obviously, some of them you knew about, like Knight Rider and all those big popular ones. But I bet you didn't know, for example, that Dallas was turned into a computer game. I didn't know that, Jason. Tell me more about Dallas the computer game. It was called Dallas Quest. Ooh. And it was released in 1984 yeah. for Commodore 64 and various other platforms. In the game, you are a famous detective who has been summoned to South Fork. That's the ranch, isn't it? Remember? For a secret meeting with Sue Ellen. Sounds good, this. She's called you here to offer you a proposition. The dirty little... Sue Ellen is in possession of a letter from Jock Ewing written to Miss Ellie describing an extremely rich oil field he had discovered during his stay in South America. When Jock left for his ill-fated trip back to South Fork Ranch, he carried a map of the oil field with him. I'm sold. I think it's a treasure hunting game, Greg. What's it on? The PS4? No, Commodore 64. Oh. We have the Commodore 64. Let's try and find Dallas Quest. Let's not, Jason. Why not? Because I don't want to be the person going into a shop and saying, Hello, do you have Dallas, the game? For the Commodore 64. Which shop would you go in and ask for a Com Commodore 64 game, Greg? A C C Commodore 64 game? I don't know. Not Game or CEX or any of those. Or GameStop. Um, the game was positively received by your Commodore. Their okay. review... Your, co your Commodore. <laughs> that was a magazine. Your Commodore. <laughs> <laughs> Their review praised the graphics, which were considered to be some of the best in the genre, although the quality didn't mean that they'd take a long time to be reproduced. A minor criticism was that there was not very much music. Oh. Well, surely it had to have the theme. What, you mean like a keyboard theme? do 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 I loved TV Elf. Oh, Me we too. A, we had a picture of Elf, didn't we? The alien life form, Elf, from the planet... Krypton. No. I will give you, right now, £100 if you can tell me which planet Alf was from. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Yes. No devices allowed. Are you serious? Because yes. I know the answer. Go on, then. You're going to give me £100? Yeah. You won't give me £100? I will. I don't know the answer. I knew you didn't. <laughs> Alf was from Melmac. Melmac! Yeah, that's what I said. Under and print. he liked to eat... Toast. <laughs> I really haven't seen it for ages. It's been a long, long time. Cats. That's what they eat on Melmac. Obviously, he didn't eat them. Because there was always a thing about him chasing the cat, wasn't he? And the, what was the name of the family that he lived with, Greg? The Muffin family. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't remember. I love the programme, but I can't remember the it. The Tanners. Yeah. Anyway, it was great. I'll tell you what I always remember about Elf. It was... Very rare that you saw the full body version of him, wasn't it? Yeah. And then when you did see it, it freaked you out a little bit because it was clearly an anima, anima, It was clearly a robot. It wasn't. There was a man inside it. That's what I meant. <laughs> Love that program. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, Alf, the TV show program. There was a man inside it. Yeah. That you loved so much that you know everything about. Is this was a little man? <laughs> TV show that you love and know so much about. No, just because I don't know about it doesn't mean I didn't love it. I loved Elf. But I bet you did know that it was turned into a computer game, didn't you? No, I didn't know that. Well, it was. Oh, tell me, Jade. Released on the Sega Master System in 1989. Was it? On the yeah. Master System? Yeah. Can't believe it, can you? I'm really shocked at that. Uh, Is that the cover there? Yes. Oh, so, I bet you could see that. Oh, I'll put it on the screen. Oh, all right. Elf is an action-adventure video game where the player controls Alf. I kill me. He must. That's what. That was his catchphrase. One of them, anyway. Ha. 
he must collect the necessary items and solve puzzles to repair Alf's spaceship. Do you want to do it? <clears throat> there you go. The game features several locations through which players can roam freely. Alf's house, the street, the basement of the house, Alf's backyard and a pond in the backyard. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? Cool. Bring, so, back, bring back Dallas. As in any quest, for the, the passing game must collect various objects. For example, a stick of salami. Standard. Which can be used to deal with bats. Uh, scuba gear, which allows him to plunge to the bottom of the pond. Um, items can be found as the game progresses and some can be purchased through the in-game store. Now when it says in-game store, that's not like mobile apps now where you have to actually spend physical money, Greg. Greg had a bit of an incident where he accidentally spent £50 in Gordon Ramsay's Yeah, it was Gordon Ramsay's kitchen, Ramsey's game. kitchen dash game and I spent forty eight ninety nine. By accident, on <laughs> coins that I didn't even want. I mean, I wouldn't mind it because they're gold bars, but I bought some on coins. I didn't need the coins. But Forty-eight pounds ninety-nine pence. All right. In the games on Master System and other consoles, when you earn dollars and stuff, there, some games had like an in-game store, didn't they? Particularly racing games and stuff like that, where you could upgrade your car. The flies return, Jason. Oh, no. The flies in here again. Jeff Goldblum's here again. Mm. Um, so that was out. So, so that was Alf, the computer game, Greg. Shall I play a clip? Put a clip in, Jason. I'm going to. Okay. Hey! Hiya. We've already said hello. No! Hey, what does that mean to you, Greg? It means you look like you're an absolute idiot. The funds, Greg. Oh, right, sorry, yeah. However... Yeah, but he looked cool. You yeah. look like a pillock. But just before we go up I don't, think further, I don't think I've ever used that word, pillock. It's quite funny, isn't it? Just before we go any further, mm -hmm. um, the Angry Video Game Nerd did a uh, video recently. The Angry Video Game Nerd. What's that? Lots of people out there will know him. Oh. Um... He did a video recently about the Mandela effect and the fact that we all thought that the Fonz did that. Hey, both thumbs up. But nowhere in the TV series can you find the Fonz actually doing it with both thumbs up. That's interesting, isn't it, Greg? Mm. So it's a myth. No, it's, a, it's called the Mandela effect when we all share the same memory. A bit like, remember when we covered the ending of Big that everybody thought it saw, where he went back to school and the teacher came in as a young girl and it turned out to be from another film. Same thing. You're messing with people's minds now. Yeah. We've done that we many episodes. We should do an episode about the Mandela Effect. Let's do it. We will. Soon. Anyway, we're talking about video games. Right, right? yeah. The TV yeah. programmes oh. made into video games. Right, I didn't like them. The Fonz oh. was made into a video game. That did not make it to any of the platforms that you and I know about, but it was an arcade game. Oh. The Fonz video game was developed by Sega. Oh, it's a proper cabinet, yeah. Yeah. The game was based on the hit TV show Happy Days, and the slogan was, TV's hottest name, your hottest game. They were good at slogans in the 70s and 80s. That's right? genius, isn't it? Uh, the game itself was simply a rebranded variant of Sega's earlier 1976 game, Motocross, also known as Man TT. So... That would mean that so. it was in a customised arcade cabinet that you can see there in the picture, which I'll put on the screen. Uh, motorbike road race game, basically. Car driving game released in February 1976. So, the Fonz game so, so. was a motor racing game. And then now, there's no clips or anything? Well, there won't be a clip of the Fonz game, I don't think. I may find a clip of Motocross, so I'll have a look at that. If not... There's just going to be a picture of the Fonz in a minute going, Hey! <laughs> Let's find out what we've got. Go. Hey! Whoa. Do, 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 do,
What I was talking about then? Murder, she wrote. Yeah, yeah, of course I did. Did you know it was a computer game? Really got on my nerves though. What? I mean, she's quite a snotty little woman, isn't she? I mean, she's always. You can't say that. No, she's always poking her nose in everyone's business, isn't you she? You can't say that about. I mean, every day. Angela Lansbury. It seemed like every day she had another. She was involved in another. I mean, it's like every day we go out, there's going to be another murder mystery. Know, yeah. Every day. Anyway, it was turned into a computer game, Greg. What but was? surprising, murder she wrote. Oh. But surprisingly, not until 2009. Don't know why. But it was big in the 80s. Yeah. Well, the game actually was a bit of a throwback to the point-and-click adventure games of the 80s and 90s. Um, it features five murder mysteries, which left players to find the culprits behind each one. Obviously, clues were discovered. By it was watching... a murder mystery game. Yeah, unbelievable. Yes, yeah, that is shocking, isn't it? Uh, unfold and then clicking around locations until hints present themselves. I mean, you say that, Greg, like it's obvious. But some TV shows were turned into games that have nothing to do with the actual TV show, which you'll find out shortly. Uh, none of the original actors from Murder She Wrote voiced any of the characters within the computer game. So it's like Night Rider the game, then. Yeah. It's so good of you to come down to Vermont for a visit, Jessica. How long has it been? Too long. That's why I jumped at the chance when Middlebury College invited me to be a guest lecturer. What was the most famous TV program do you think to come out of America in a long time? In the 90s? Yeah. Well, one of the most famous was Home Improvement. Yes. Do you remember the episode where Tim Allen uh, was chasing dinosaurs and acid spewing mummies? Uh, no. No, me neither. But that is what the game was all about. What? Um... Home Improvements Power Tool Pursuit, the game was called. Um, it was developed by Sega and it was on the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo? Yes. Would you like to hear about the plot of Home Improvements, the video game? Well, I mean, it sounds incredible. Power Tool Pursuit. Go for it. On a special broadcast of the show, Tool Time, Tim prepares to unveil the new Binford Ultra Power Tool line, named after him, the Binford Taylor Turbo Power Tool line. He goes to retrieve them, only to discover that they are missing and a note left in their place demanding he come and find them. The player's weapons include modified tools such as a nail gun, a blowtorch, a chainsaw which hurls energy waves. These weapons are used to fight dinosaurs, acid spewing mummies, robot sentries and other enemies. The game is broken down into four worlds at four levels, each world containing a boss level. The game had no real instruction manual explaining each of the buttons in its place. Fake manual was used with a sticker reading, real men don't need instructions. <laughs> A message also appears on the splash screen, apparently. It's, it, it, I mean, literally, it's got nothing, nothing to, to do, do with home improvement, has it? Shall we have a look at a clip of some gameplay? Let's! You had a headache earlier. Yeah, I still got it actually. I think you've passed it on to me. No, I think it'll go now though, my headache. Because, uh, time to cheer you up, Jace. What's the matter with you? You've got to get over this. Just get on with it. Jason. Yes? I've just been on a cycling holiday and it was the most exhausting thing I've ever done in my entire life. I really have to get a smaller caravan. Because you were towing the caravan with your bike. Time for a commercial break. Can't believe you just took my fart off of me. Don't you, Gus? What? HP Source. Brings your taste buds back to life again. After a 
hard morning's workout, you'll need something quick and nutritious, like Cadbury Smash. Real potato pieces that ripple with vitamin C. Mm. Leaving you raring to go. eBay find them the three pound of the week. Oh. Best intro ever, that. Anyway, we've been on the auction site, haven't we, Greg? Yeah. The most famous one. There are others available. There's not really. Why are you no. hiding it? It's in the intro. Oh, yeah. We say eBay find them the week. Logo's on the screen. Now. Yeah, <laughs> idiot. Uh, I mean, um... So, Greg, what have you found for under three pounds so, on eBay? This well, week? I found something that angered me. Oh, why'd you buy it then? Because it was under three pounds. In fact, it was fifty pence. So I think I did the bargain this week. Now, I'm obviously a huge Night Rider fan, as we know. I even had the car at my wedding, didn't I? Mm. Um, so it absolutely horrified me when they brought out a program called. Team Knight Rider, Jason. It was wonderful, wasn't it? Possibly one of the worst ideas I've ever seen. So I bought the annual of Team <laughs> Knight Rider. The worst idea of a concept of a program ever. In fact, do I want to read you the tagline of it? Yes, it's what it says. Please do. Ten years ago, all it took was one man and one car to get the job done. Now, in other words, the kid's gone, they don't give a... Now, the Foundation for Law and Government has assembled five... Flag. Flag. Five highly skilled opera, opera people and paired them with the most advanced vehicles to take on a new breed of outlaw. They are Team Knight Rider. It was a terrible programme. I mean, look at that car. That's supposed to be one of... That's, this is Knight Rider. It's got Knight Rider in the title. Look at them! Oh, well, well, I mean, that's a bad thing, is it? Well, <clears throat> oh, well, I mean, it's a. Oh, that's quite good. I mean, the, the whole lot. Oh, well, oh, that's phenomenal. I, mean, it's, I really must watch Team Night Rider and give it another go. Yeah, but if you've never seen Team Night, Night Rider, give it a go because it really is horrendous and there is no link to Night Rider whatsoever. So why they call it Night Rider, I never know. So that's my fifty pound, uh, fifty p, fifty p, yeah, fifty p fine of the week. That's going in the bin. Now I know you said it's not a competition, Greg. It's not a competition, is it? But here's mine. Is that official? That's official from ah. nineteen ninety three. Super Mario Brothers official mug. Brilliant. That is brilliant. I was, it, you can tell it's the proper. It was two pound fifty. Oh. Oh, you, you paid for it, didn't you? Yeah. Nine, yeah, yeah, not... Oh, yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Well, this isn't going to be like a running theme where I have to buy cups and mugs and stuff. Because last time I bought Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle drinks cups, didn't I? Do you know what, though, Jase? I have to say, I think it's quite hard finding um, anything under three pound that's, that's what, you know, relates to what we do. Yeah. I found this one really difficult this week. That's probably why we've only done it twice. Yours was a terrible find, Greg. In every sense of the word. It's an annual. It's a terrible annual from a terrible TV show. Right, Greg. That is it for Tea and Toast Saturday. We haven't seen this in a while, have we? If you would like to send us something, an email, a message, a picture or anything, send it to tnt at totgu.com. Sometimes we feature your pictures on the programme. We will do. We need, we need a few, though, don't we? We do, yeah. Uh, doesn't have to be in capitals. Doesn't have to be in capitals. Have you finished? That's yes. nice, that breeze. Oh. Anyway, that's it for this week. We'll see you again on the next edition of whatever it is that's coming next, Greg. Jason, don't you know anything? It's Monday, which means we're in the kitchen. Oh.